Hey everyone, welcome back. I wanted to tell you the story about the very first gothic magazine I ever read, which led to my very first gothic crush. So that magazine was Propaganda Magazine and the year was 1994. I became aware of the magazine from a record store called Record Connection and it was independently owned so they had really cool stuff in it. In the back they had boxes upon boxes full of back issues of magazines. So although I discovered propaganda in 94 I was able to quickly find back issues and I owned I would say issues dating back to about 1990. It was through these magazines that I became aware of a model from the magazine by the name of John Koviak. For me, it was love at first sight. And I'm, I'm getting like all giddy thinking about it because I remember the feelings associated. Back then, the goth scene was very different in the sense that it was romanticized. It was something very beautiful and very romantic. Everybody wore their hearts in their sleeve. It's not like it is today. It's very different. There was more of a mystery about it. And, you know, pair that up with the fact that you're this wistful 14-year-old and it's the perfect storm. And it was from these mini back issues that I bought up every single one, including the duplicates. So I had tons and tons of propaganda magazines at my home and I cut out every single picture it had of John Koviak and his pictures completely lined my walls. So I would lie in my room, sometimes staring at the pictures on my walls and uh, writing poems and, you know, the most heartfelt, kind of soppy, gothic crap you could possibly think of, I did it. It became abundantly clear to me that I knew absolutely nothing about this guy other than his name. Now, there were stories in uh, Propaganda Magazine, which he appeared as the model for, but these were not stories about him, so I knew virtually nothing about this man. So nowadays you'd say, well, Google. Guess what? No Google. Back then, everything you learned was through word of mouth or through magazines. Now we did have the internet, but I didn't have it in my house. I knew nobody that had it in their house because this wasn't a time where people had home computers really. Not, you know, not in my area anyway. I don't know how it was in the rest of the world. Uh, when you wanted to access the internet, you would use your high school's library, which I did. Now this was also during the period where there were very, very, very few gothic resources available online. Really few. Um, the most that I ever really found around that time were gothic chat rooms. But I was able to find a bit of information about John Kobiak and what I was able to find was he was actually a member of a band that I listened to called London After Midnight, which I didn't know at the time, but he was a very short-lived member of the band. Well, a few years later, when London After Midnight came to New York City, I went there and I was ecstatic. I was going to not only finally catch a glimpse of him in person, but I was going to talk to him. That was my MO. I'm going to talk to this man because I just sort of had to put a personality with a face. So here I am, freshly 17 years old at this point, and I bought my ticket and I make my way into the city and it was... Uh, London After Midnight, and it was at the Angel Orson Sands Foundation. I remember where it was, and I remember the outfit I wore and everything. I had a burgundy velvet bodice on that laced up the front, and I had a long black velvet skirt, and I had this amazing velvet, I was, I was all in velvet, long velvet opera coat, and it was snowing out, and it had a hood, so I remember I put my hood up. I was intent on speaking to this man, and I wanted to look my very, very best. I got the absolute shit embarrassed out of me because I'm still young at this point and I'm speaking to some of the elder goths and saying how excited I am to see John Kobiak to which one of them says John Kobiak fuck have you been he hasn't been in the band in years and I'm like oh, I was so bummed really totally bummed about it but despite my you know complete and utter disappointment of the fact that I wasn't going to see John Kobiak I still was very excited that I was going to see London After Midnight because they happen to be one of my favorite bands. So, I mean, that was a party bonus right there. So the year is 1998, and it's at this point that my family finally get the goddamn internet in their house. I'm no longer enthralled with him at this point as I was when I was younger, but my ears would still perk up at the name because there was still that mystery there. I mean, when I was younger, I'd fallen in love with his face, and I'm not going to lie, whenever I, you know, would come across pictures or something, I would still get that sort of pounding in my heart, but it was frustrating because I knew virtually nothing about this person. So there was always that kind of curiosity in the back of my mind of wondering. So 
I did a little bit of a hunt and it didn't take long because I found that he actually has a music project out under the name Subversion. And I immediately ordered it. It was a CD called Winds of War and I loved it. Having this CD in my possession finally was actually, believe it or not, uh, it was closure. It was like it being able to close a book because prior to that, like I said, he was just a face. But now he's so much more. I'm peering into his soul by listening to the words that he'd written from his heart, from his mind. I'm listening to the music that he'd written. I finally get it. And I was able to close the chapter. And that was basically, that was it. Okay, so I'm minding myself getting dangerously close to rambling, so I'm going to end this here. I'm going to provide as many links to propaganda magazine related items that I could find that I think you might find interesting. And I'm also going to provide links that I can find to Subversion or John Koviak's work which I really quite like, and I hope you do as well. I upload a new video every week. Please subscribe, and I'm going to say bye-bye now because I suck at ending these things, so bye.